Welcome back. Uh, it's been a little more than 10 minutes. Uh, one thing that students often get uh, confused about is they feel like it has to burn for exactly 15 minutes. Uh, or if the lab directions say burn for about 12 minutes, they say it's got to burn for 12.000 minutes. Okay. As long as you have the initial time that you started to let it burn and the final time, it doesn't really matter because all we'll do is we'll set up a ratio at the very end. Okay. We're going to set up a ratio as to uh, 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 what will happen to mass and volume over time. All right. So uh, now that we've recorded all of our information, we saw that uh, the candles are not radioactive. We've noticed that the hot air rises, okay? Um, we're seeing that sometimes maybe a drip might have come down, but the drip that's come down has landed on the uh, container, on the little metal cap that's in the bottom. Uh oh, okay? Uh, maybe we spill, okay? Hopefully we don't spill, okay? If we do spill, we want to collect all the wax afterwards. So this one I made a little boo-boo there. I, I spilled a little bit. I don't want to do that, okay? This one I didn't, uh, but we're going to blow the candles out. Uh, we'll record, uh, we'll see there's some smoke and everything else, but we're going to go ahead and record uh, the mass afterwards. So here's our balance, we're going to turn it on, we're going to tear it, make sure it's reading zero, and then we're going to record the mass afterwards, all right? Again, we've collected all the wax before and all the wax afterwards, okay? And we're going to see what happens to the mass. And same thing for this one, okay, there's a little bit of a boo-boo there, okay, I spilled a little tiny bit, um, but that's almost insignificant, okay? So we're gonna record the mass afterwards in, uh, uh, of the candle. Now again, you only have to do one of them. It doesn't really matter, okay, what color you have. Uh, but we're gonna see what happens to the mass as you burn a candle, okay? We will also go ahead and do the same thing. We'll record the volume using water displacement technique as well, okay? Now, one of the problems you'll run into, okay, is that some of the wax might have dripped onto here, okay? And uh, there might be a little bit that's on here. Uh, if that's the case, then what you might wanna do is um, just add maybe like one or two milliliters of um, uh, when you record your final volume, okay? We'll wait until this gets nice and hard, it's nice and hard. We'll go ahead, record our initial volume for our water. We'll put it in, okay? We'll see that, oh, this one floats as well. We'll push it down, okay, and record our new volume. Now again, with water displacement technique, it doesn't matter where you start. It just matters that you record the initial volume and the final volume afterwards, all right? Uh, so as a result of pushing it down, we record our new volume, and we see if the volume changed over time, and we'll see if the mass changed over time. Oh, we forgot about height, okay? We can also record the height and see if the height changed over time. Um, notice we will have to record the initial and final time that uh, we, we let the candle burn for, as well as our initial mass and our final mass, uh, and our initial volume and our final volume. So we'll record all that information. Uh, from there, we're going to go ahead and do some calculations. Everything else is going to be calculations. Um, you might have to calculate the density, uh, seeing that this is the case. Okay, in which the candle floats in the water, we should be able to come up with a reasonably good estimate. Uh, if your estimate is, uh, is uh, wrong, okay, and if you say, wait a second, okay, uh, I'm coming up with a density value that doesn't support this idea that the candle is floating on the water, uh, you might have to uh, put a little footnote or an asterisk by that. So uh, with this information, we can actually calculate uh, when the candle will be totally gone, all right? There's some math involved. Uh, and we can do that using uh, the height, the change in height, the change in mass, or the change in volume. Now, when we do the change in mass or the change in height, uh, and we determine when the candle will go out and be extinguished entirely, those two answers might not be the same. So even though we do, we measure the change in height or the change in mass over time, okay, um, it seems that uh, if we do the math, uh, we'll get two very, very different answers. And that's okay. Uh, um, uh, one thing that uh, people also will get confused with is they will think that the mass does not change over time. And uh, that is wrong, okay? When you go ahead and do this experiment, you'll see the mass before and the mass afterwards uh, decrease over time. So uh, that's uh, our candle lab and how uh, we work through the calculations on the candle lab. Uh, we will give you some data and you'll uh, record some actual data if we are back in, in school in 2020. Thank you. 
So these are our calculations for our two-level class. Uh, as we go through our data, we have our candle and uh, we have the mass of the candle. Now notice we were going to for sure subtract the mass of the container. Okay, So we weigh the container and the candle together like so. Okay, And then we weigh the, contain the, the lid and we subtract that. So we want just the mass of the candle. All right. So uh, the mass of just a candle before we burned is as follows, 38.85 grams. That's just the mass of the candle. The height of the candle we measured to be 9.4 centimeters. The width of the candle I measured a little more carefully than I did in the video, and I measured it to be 2.4 centimeters. Now I'm measuring the diameter from edge to edge, so that's our diameter. It's important to write down both the number of the unit and what I'm measuring. I'm measuring the width of the candle, the diameter, as 2.4 centimeters. <clears throat> the volume of the candle, I have the water in initially. I put the candle in, and then I record the volume before with water only, then I record the water with the volume and the candle, no, noticing I pushed down that candle a little bit, and it came up with 40 milliliters for the volume of just a candle. Now afterwards, I weighed the candle again. After I burned the candle, I got a mass of 34. 62 grams after I burned the candle. The height of the candle, when I measured afterwards, I got 8.5 centimeters. Height of the candle after burning. The volume of the candle, again, I did the same technique. I just did that same technique afterwards, okay? I had the volume of the water. Notice, it doesn't matter how much water you put in there. The first time I put in a different amount, as long as I simply record the volume of the water initially and the volume of the water afterwards, um, I'm getting 38 milliliters for just a candle, okay? So put some water in there, record the volume of the water, put a candle in there and the water, and then subtract. That's going to give me the volume of just a candle. Now here's where it can be a little bit tricky, okay? The time I started burning it uh, was 12, 20, and 30 seconds, and that was in the afternoon. So I didn't record the time using a stopwatch, I used a clock. So 12 minutes... 12, hour 12, 20 minutes and 30 seconds in the afternoon was my start time and my end time was 12, uh, uh, 12 hour uh, 51 and 2 seconds. So 12, 51 and 2 seconds. So from these I'm going to have to subtract to determine how much time actually burned. Okay, How much time did the candle actually burn? Now what happens is it's a little bit tricky because the seconds are, are not a decimal, okay? It's not base 10. So uh, tw hour 12, 51 and two seconds minus 12 hours and 20 seconds, 30 seconds, uh, gave us a total of 30 minutes and 32 seconds. Now, uh, 30 minutes and uh, 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 32 seconds, okay, uh, the 32 seconds, I want to convert that to minutes, so now I'm going to get 30.53 minutes. I want to be in a decimal. I want to have a, a quantitative value. I don't have minutes and seconds. I just want to have just minutes. So I'm doing this. I'm, I'm converting my seconds into minutes. 32 seconds is about 0.53 of a minute. That's about half a minute, a little more than half a minute. So the total time burn was 30 minutes and 30.53 minutes. Now here's where the math comes in, okay? So the rate of burning the candle. We want to determine the rate of the burning of the candle. How much does a candle burn per minute, okay? And we're doing uh, the change in mass. So we're going to determine the change in mass over the change in time. So let's go find where our initial mass of our candle was and our final mass of our candle was. Look up those values. 
subtract them, and then we'll divide it by the time that we let the candle burn for. So our initial mass was 38.85 grams. Our final mass was 34.62 grams. The difference between those two divided by our 30.53 minutes, this was uh, 4.23 grams divided by our 30.53 minutes gives us a rate of 0.138 grams per one minute. Notice I'm not doing the slashy things. I'm having a numerator and denominator. 0.138 grams per one minute means that in every minute, you would expect about 0.138 grams to, uh, of candle to disappear, okay? Uh, so that's what it is. And notice okay, how I'm having a numerator and a denominator in these. I'm not doing the slashy thing. Please don't ever do the slashy thing again. Always have a top and a bottom. If you have a division, you want to have a numerator and a, de and a denominator. So this is the rate of the candle burning by how much it's decreasing its mass per minute. We could also determine the rate of the candle based upon the height. So the change in the height per minute. So the candle's height initially was 9.4 centimeters. It went down to 8.5 centimeters over the course of 30.53 minutes. Okay. So what we're getting here is 0.029 centimeters per minute. Notice I'm including the number and the unit. So our final answer here was 0.029 centimeters per minute. What does that mean? That means over the course of one minute, you would expect the candle's height to go down 0.029 centimeters. Now that's not very much, but uh, uh, that makes sense because the candle's height does not go down very much in any given uh, minute. It would take maybe 10, 20 minutes to go down a measurable amount. The last thing we're gonna calculate is the density, okay? So density, uh, before we burn, you wanna calculate the density before we burn. A reminder about density, density is mass over volume, or M over V, so the, uh, D equals M over V. We're gonna record the mass, which was 38.85 grams, and we'll divide it by the volume of 40 milliliters. So there's our mass, and there's our volume. Notice we're gonna divide them. We're gonna keep the units, and that's okay. We get an answer of 0.97 grams per, notice when you see that divide law by, you wanna say the word per, per one milliliter. Meaning that if you have one milliliter, it would weigh 0.97 grams, all right? So this uh, per just, uh, is not just divided by, it means something, okay? Notice the value is a little bit less than one, which makes sense because a candle floated. The density of water is one gram per milliliter, and the candle's density was less than that. Things that are less dense float. And this value is less than one, so the candle floated in the water. So here's our density we calculated before it burned, and then we calculated also after it burned. It's the same formula, but we'll have different data. Our candle after we burned was 34.62 grams, that's our mass. Again, here's our mass, here's our volume, here's our mass, here's our volume. Our volume afterwards was 38 milliliters. We divide the two and we get 0.91 grams per milliliter, okay? So here's, I should have put down density here, but it's 0.91 grams per milliliter. Now, is that a difference? That's pretty similar, okay? We're gonna have a little bit of uncertainty in our data, okay? But notice both values should be less than one. Uh, because the density of water is one gram per one milliliter and this, this candle floated. We can see it here as it's floating. So uh, here are some of our calculations that we should be uh, calculating in case we are still not able to go to school. Bye.